Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all fandoms, welcome to the Ferret and Raccoon podcast episode 108. I am the younger raccoon. And I am Recess. Back from uh, the... the Dead. The, I guess you could say dead to some extent. Um, <laughs> g- given given the schedule, the way the podcast is going, it almost seems as if almost everyone but me is dead <laughs> to some extent. But um, no, it's been a while since you've been on the uh, last podcast, Recess. Yeah. Um, I cannot remember which one specifically. No, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. Um, maybe people can let us know. I'll probably know by the time this uh, podcast goes up. But it's good to have you back. This Thank is you. your 2019 debut. Debut. Boom. Debut. When's the album dropping? <laughs> um, <laughs> next year. <laughs> next year. Okay. Um, a lot of promo in between. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's that's what you got to do. You got to like yeah. it's at least two to three months of like promotional songs yeah. and stuff like that. Tour dates come exactly, out before right. the album comes out. You know, um, any any title on the album? Uh, not yet. I mean, we've got a few. We're just you okay, know. just working it out. Yeah, it's working out. Fair enough. Fair enough. And uh, trap in fl- flavor, yeah. <laughs> of course. Um, of course. <laughs> bringing it out. Got my co Ariana Grande. Yeah, Ariana Grande is <laughs> working hard on that new album. <laughs> that lady does not stop. Does not stop, man. <laughs> But um, besides uh, musical jokes, um, yeah, we're back for the first podcast of February, and it's uh, usually January is such a nothing month, mm. and February is just speeding by for the most part. Yeah. I mean, the weather's been pretty crazy in England, pretty cold. We got, finally got some uh, snow, yeah. which actually hit the country, and the wind, well, we had a storm as well, and the cold and the storm is still pretty much present for the most part, but I'm fine as long as it's not sunny. I, I can't stand the sun, but it's, uh, you know, not for any real reason other than it it ruins my collection of things because sunlight is it just bleaches it, isn't it? It's bleaches like... it, and I don't like that because yeah. I have uh, I have issues, yeah. simply put. But um, for the most part, recess. What have you been up to over the last? Let's just say since two thousand and nineteen oh, started ish. But you can do like the last two weeks, I guess. I'm going to sound so boring, I don't know. No, no. Life updates. Um, I was on a very crucial mission that I'm currently on, apart from working on the album. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, my mission was just to really watch less Netflix and read more books. Because usually that's the reverse <laughs> for most people. <laughs> right. So I thought, you know what? Jazz it up a bit. Yeah. Um, it's going all right. There are a few programs on Netflix, which I have watched this year, which we'll go into later. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I've just been trying to read Game of Thrones um, before the next season's out. But that's not going to happen. Yeah, it's quite a long um, series. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, that's it really. That's it, just working yeah. on that uh, I was trying to, collection, I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of in the same kind of mindset in terms of what I'm doing, in terms of things I've, I'm trying to get achieved media-wise. So, obviously, as some people have noticed over the last few podcasts, I've definitely been going in hard on, like, television mm. this year. Older stuff, newer stuff. Um, last podcast, I talked about how I basically watched everything to do with Black Mirror, uh, except mm. for the Bandersnatch interactive DVD menu. Right. And um, <laughs> for the most part, I'm kind of staying along on that same track where I basically went and watched the 2007... Yeah, 2017 series although it ran into 2018 uh philip k dick's electric dreams right. mm-hmm. now this was a series i often thought was basically channel 4's um I, it's, it's hard to say basically channel 4's take on losing black mirror because obviously black mirror originally was on um channel four i have to keep reminding people that because i have to keep in mind there are some people who were born from the moment the first episode happened to mm-hmm. the latest season it happens and it's quite freakish when you think about that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> um but yeah this series funny enough was actually a long time in development for channel four because they they had it even before um well since black mirror was on even the series creator and writer charlie brooker was gonna do an episode or offered to do an episode of electric dreams and going into this series i i always have a bad feeling when i've heard nothing about a series and i'm always like this could be really bad and for the most part this series is really messy it is all over the place we've got 10 episodes roughly about 45 minutes long all adapting short stories from philip k dick and I'd it's it's weird, 
this series is honestly really weird. And I'm kind of going to do what I did really quickly on the last podcast where I basically went through every episode of Black Mirror from series three to four, kind of giving like my rough thoughts because my gosh, some stuff happens mm-hmm. in this series or doesn't happen in this series because mm-hmm. I, yeah, like I said, this is confusing. Mm-hmm. The, I like, I'm, I'm not the kind of person who's going to go, I didn't get it. Therefore it's bad. I straight up didn't understand some of these episodes and I'm not afraid to admit that I came up with these episodes going, what? what the hell? I didn't get that. <laughs> like, and I don't know whether that's just I'm not getting the story or there's some bad <laughs> direction. Yeah. And I think it might be the latter. So the first episode starts off with an episode titled, let me see what it's called, uh, The Hoodmaker. And this episode is the longest episode. So obviously it's the grand introduction <laughs> to the series. Yeah. And the first thing that's quite striking about this series is it's very cheap. Oh. It's very intentionally 80s. As in, like, what the 80s thought the future was going to look like still with the 80s aesthetic vibe kind of stuff. So I think Blade Runner, for example. Um, Which is fine. It kind of works, but it feels cheap, unfortunately. Especially when you realize that Amazon Studios, Sony Pictures, Television, and Channel 4 all had production hands and funded this series. (laughs) List off the names, boy. (laughs) Yeah, and there's a few other people who who did I don't know what. But it goes in, and this series basically is about, it's kind of trying to be like a neo-noir kind of crime detective story where there's people who can read minds, and she's hooked up with a detective, and people don't want people who can read minds around, but there's like conflict. We don't ever really find out what that is, honestly, maybe it's better that way. I mean, I don't don't really think we needed a five-minute introduction, this is the world we live in. We didn't need that. But what we did need was closure because this episode <laughs> just ends. It ends so abruptly. I was like, damn, this episode's like, oh, that's the credits. Because it just ends. It's called The Hood Maker because some guy is making hoods that stops like psychics from reading people's minds. But that's dealt with in like three minutes. Mm. And then the episode just ends. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to bed angry now because I've got nine more episodes to go. And uh, yeah, not a great start. The next episode is Impossible Planet, which is a pretty cool name, but uh, it's basically about a bunch of tour... These two guys who are tour... They do tours of planets, and they put on a fake show, and this lady's like, I want to go see Earth. And, you know, they're like, oh, we Earth doesn't exist. But they're like, oh, we're basically offering you millions. They're like, right, well, we'll, we'll take you to Earth. Mm. You know, and it's kind of revolved around that. I don't understand the ending. I don't get it. So like, what I'm getting right now, sorry, is that they don't really end the episodes well. <laughs> some episodes do, that's the thing, which uh, makes me think that some episodes were directed, written slightly better. Um, the next episode, The Commuter, is by far one of the best episodes because, first of all, it doesn't take place in the future. It takes place in present day, and it's literally about a guy who basically runs the London train services, discovering that there might be another world that he can access via the train. It's very classic 80s, very ghost story-esque, and it's very well done. It's very slow to some extent, but it kind of has a very interesting um, way in which it's kind of presented. And um, I was really happy to see, I forget his name, uh, Timothy Spall, who most people know as the the guy in Harry Potter, who was like the rat. So I'm always happy to see him. I was like, yeah, I was even more happy to see uh, episode four, Crazy Diamond, which is a great reference. Um, Steve Buscemi is in this, who everyone knows Steve Buscemi. And uh, this is by far the most confusing episode. Confusing in a good way? Confusing in a bad way, oh. because this is the episode I would recommend everyone watch. Okay. Because I don't know what they were thinking. Ooh. It has some great ideas where it's basically about artificial everything being artificial nothing being natural Mm -hmm. there's some great concepts like they try and dig into the ground and they just hit metal everything's fake to some extent um one of the main problems with it is the color correction they i get what they're trying to do they try to make everything look overly bright because everything's artificial of course grass would be really green but the problem is it was very clear that they didn't film with that intention so it just looks awful it looks distracting um and the way the way people die in this is weird like 
this episode's weird because there's a scene where there's this woman who's half human, half pig. Oh my gosh, yeah. okay. She's half human, half pig, and the makeup she has looks pretty damn good. Does she look anything like Miss Piggy? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she looks like what a human and a pig would look like, basically. Oh God. And Steve Buscemi's wife is basically talking about him, and she basically says, oh, but what does what is normal anymore? To which the woman's like, oh, but I'm 40% normal, hmm. which is an interesting idea. To which he's like, oh, I didn't mean it like that. She's like, oh, that's okay. I wasn't bred to be offended. Wow. And I'm like, that's a pretty cool yeah, yeah. stuff. That's that's some good stuff right yeah. there. But then you, but then within the same episode, you have a two second scene of a guy randomly firing his gun in the forest God. for no reason other than he's angry. So there are good elements and then it sometimes just goes off whack. It's yeah, the like, ending, like, I was like, what? Oh, God. Uh, real life. I don't even remember this episode. I'll be honest. No, that's not a good sign. <laughs> I don't remember this episode. Damn. Um, Maybe you skipped it, or you just blocked out your memory. It was that bad. I'm trying to read the synopsis, just... and it's not. It's not coming don't. to me. <laughs> um, episode six. <laughs> uh, Human is. This is the episode with Brian Cranston, the flagship boy. Um, kind of an interesting episode where nothing kind of happens. It's basically like, yeah, it's, we're we're running out of oxygen and. Um, you know, like my husband might not be my husband, hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Episode seven, the father thing, which is probably one of the best hmm. episodes. Um, interesting. Essentially, it's a I don't know which story came first or how much was changed from this story, but it's basically a what if we focused more on the children in a invasion of the body snatchers kind of scenario. Oh. And that's all I'm going to say. If you like Stranger okay. Things, you'll probably really like this episode. That's cool. But by far one of the best episodes. Episode 8, Autofet, Autofac, as in F-A-C. Um, this episode has a great twist, but it has an even better concept where it's basically... It's basically what would happen if the world ended and Amazon, something like Amazon still continued. Where we live in a world where a factory just keeps producing things for humans. The world's ended, it keeps just giving them useless things like shoes and clothes and stuff like that. And the people who are still here are like, we need to shut this down or get it to stop doing this because it's polluting our air. And it's an interesting idea because like, yeah, mm. what would happen? What would the AIs do once exactly, humans yeah. once humans go? Yeah. It's a great concept. Um, episode 9, Safe and Sound, which Sounds is... Crazy. <laughs> I believe this one... This one was dumb. Oh, it's the story it's based on is much better, and I won't say what it is because it's a spoiler. But this episode, the main character is dumb, and it's very frustrating. Where it's like, it's very obvious that this main character is getting played. It's extremely obvious, but like, it, it's it's bad. Like, it's really dumb. So what is it? Get to a point where it's really annoying. And then it's just like yes, wake because up, because it's very because they try and do like the whole. But what if this is that? But it's very right. clearly not the case. It's like there's a moment where it's like you should have realized mm. you're in the main tricks. It's not the spoiler, but I'm saying it's there's a moment where you should have realized this yeah. is a dream. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just dumb. You know, um, let me let me put it this way: if <laughs> it's it gets really bad where it's like the, the main character is so gullible mm. that she believes that, Oh, in order for me not to look suspicious, let me be suspicious. Wow. Cause that, cause two wrongs make a right. Don't they? <laughs> you know, according to what someone's telling me, the character is dumb as hell. Uh, the final episode, it has the best name, which is kill all others. Mm -hmm. This is the political episode. Okay. Um, the best, one of the best concepts about this episode is the fact that it takes place in a mega nation. It's the combination of, I believe, Canada and Mexico combined okay. into one nation. Uh -huh. And we're following the presidency of this and we're following our average Joe character. And during one of the elections, he hears the candidate for the next pr um, president basically say, we got to kill all others. And only he seems to hear that. Mm. So... It's very They Live. Yeah. John Carpenter, They Live, just in case you didn't know. Um, but it has some interesting ideas and in how they would go about this. And obviously there is a bit of mystery as to what does that even mean? This kill all others. Like, what... They don't... And that's the great thing about it. They don't actually explain mm. what exactly that means or what other is. 
Okay. Which is quite... I like the vagueness of it. And it has an extremely bleak ending. Right. <laughs> probably one of the best endings. And probably one of the best episodes. But uh, okay. this whole series is a mess. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend watching it. If you thought Black Mirror Season 3 and 4 was good, mm. you will hate Electric Dreams. Because Black Mirror Season 3 and 4 are very messy. This is even messier. So, so there are a few good episodes in this. Right? There are so what elements. Are the top three or top two. Uh, top two episodes. If um, in terms of good, in my opinion, I would say the commuter and um, kill all others. Cool. Those are the best episodes to watch. And then third would be the father thing. Okay. Autofac is good, but they spend too long on the twist to the point where it gets boring, <laughs> and you're like, "Yep, I get it. Yep, I get the <laughs> twist. I get it. I get that was your plan the whole. Yep." Okay, how, how much is left? Okay, five more minutes. Okay. You know, it's very <laughs> five obvious. Five more minutes of this. <laughs> it, it's very obvious, but yeah. Um, good. Um, I, I kind of want him to do a second series just so I can laugh at it. Um, but I know that will probably never happen because... When was it out? 2017? It started in 2017. Okay. And funny enough, its viewership dropped off at 2017. Wow. <laughs> After the episode The Commuter, yeah. views dropped. Probably because people... Because... Once again, much like Black Mirror season, uh, the beginning of season three, mm. the first two episodes are just bad. They don't give you a good impression. Like, I don't care what anyone says. Nosedive and Playtest are awful Black Mirror mm. episodes. I cannot stand them. I don't ever want to see them again. If I could remove them off my DVD, <laughs> I would. They're so bad. I don't ever want to see that again. Never again, please. Charlie Brooker, no. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> don't do it. Don't let those directors ever direct anything again. Because, <laughs> like I think I said to you earlier, the director of Playtest has never been on a plane. <laughs> watch that episode and watch that scene where the main character's on a plane and you tell me if that's what a plane is like. It's not. Um, I think I've talked way too much um, about Electric Dreams. Uh, I kind of recommend it and don't. It's, it's weird. It's, it's, it's a really weird one. And, and staying with weird, I'm going to talk about some stuff that happened over the fortnight. And I didn't even know that the Super Bowl happened. That's how much I care about the Super Bowl. Because <laughs> I, right? I was just like, oh, it happened? Oh, okay. Much like the Grammys. Grammys, like, oh, happened. Gosh, yeah. And I was, like, came oh. went. I was like, okay, not really interesting. Mm. As soon as no one who really deserved to get nominated. Yeah, exactly. You know. let's, let's not get into that. Bypass the Grammys, man. But yeah, 2019's NFL Super Bowl halftime show was pretty disappointing. Mainly because Maroon 5. I don't... Oh, I don't even <laughs> understand it, really. I mean, okay, it's, this isn't the point of the discussion, but... Yeah. There was, like, a whole lot of drama with Maroon 5 playing anyway. And then they yeah. wanted to get... They wanted Cardi B, and then they, they wanted someone else, and then... And it was a mess. No one actually wanted to perform with them. I don't know why. Yeah, I think... I think Maroon 5 is kind of in that group of bands that mainstream audiences are kind of like, but everyone mm. else hates. Right. You have Nip Nickelback, you have yeah. um I'm trying to think I think Fall Out Boy now okay. is technically in that, okay. given some of their more recent albums. Yeah. Um I don't think it's Bring Me Her I think Bring Me the Horizon okay. might be in there. Some yeah. there's there's a few other bands where it's like I that's just the kiss of death. Mm. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and Maroon 5 was kind of that and also it's Maroon 5. They kind of don't have any good music right. in a lot of people's opinions. Yeah. So obviously I was shocked that, cause it almost felt like grasping at straws to some extent where mm. it's like, eh, it's somebody, mm. you know, maybe cause maybe the people they asked were too good to some extent. Yeah. And they just possibly. going down the list. Yeah. possibly. <laughs> <laughs> but the main thing that um, people were pretty excited about, this is the first time I think anyone has ever actually been excited for the Super Bowl in the last 50 years was the fact that um, there was going to be as so as people petitioned, people petitioned to mm, have yeah. um, a scene from SpongeBob appear um, during the halftime show in memory of uh, Steven Hilberg, who was the creator of SpongeBob, who passed away last year. Um, they wanted to have the a, the final scene from the episode Band Geeks essentially play, given that uh, it has so much you know kind of to do with it. It's mm. based around a halftime Super Bowl show, yeah, and people petitioned for that. Got like a million petitions. The NFL and Maroon Five basically kind of teased that it was going to happen, mm. and then you kind of 
have the moment where Maroon 5 goes silent, you see Scooter's like, yes, oh, here comes the <laughs> thingy, and then you literally get, like, maybe 10 seconds of that, and then uh, that. Travis Scott's sicko mode starts playing, and everyone was like, like, what? What just happened? Like- and... It was it was too brief to yeah. even really call it a. I know a lot of people. Oh, this, this, is, this is a heartfelt. I'm like, no, you could have blinked and you could have missed that. There's nothing heartfelt. Um, about it. No, and it's confusing as well without the context because yeah. if they played the whole clip, which it easily could have, it would have made sense. Oh, it's SpongeBob doing the halftime show song. Mm. But now people are like, why did SpongeBob appear? There's articles of people saying this is why SpongeBob appeared. It shouldn't because be the case. it shouldn't be the case. People <laughs> should be going. Oh, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, this. You know, they could have played the whole clip. The whole clip lasts about two seconds. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Two minutes. And it's not as if they couldn't get the rights for the original song mm. that um, I guess they mime. Because I mean, with the NFL, the NFL has money. It wouldn't have been an issue. They even got Nickelodeon to do newly animated sections of it. So. Oh, did they? Yeah, that's oh. that's um the bit with Squidward and when you see SpongeBob and that that's new animation. Oh, okay. The bit where they blow the trumpets that's from the original episode. Right, I'm not right. I'm that much of an animation like nerd. I guess I can tell. I know it is. Oh. But um. So through all of that. For yeah. For for si- for sicko mode. Um, <laughs> yeah. for, for Travis Scott coming down as a meteor about to destroy civilization and oh. the rap game. <laughs> for sicko mode and you know I'm not gonna blame. It's not Travis Scott's fault no. because I don't think he even knew that that was going to happen. This Tra- is the thing: it's not a dig at Travis. Scott. No, we're not. Like, not- I, I personally don't like Sicko Mode or Travis Scott, but this is not his fault. Mm. I'm not going. Oh, Travis Scott ruined my childhood. That's not <laughs> what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, well, I guess what I'm saying is they really shouldn't have teased that they were going to do this and not deliver on the promise That's because it, you're, you're playing with deliver. people's hopes and expectations yeah. really because now it comes off as even more disappointing mm. because you teased yeah. that something you could have done like like I said you could have played the just whole clip two minutes you could have as I kind of put it you could have basically had Maroon 5 do the performance have Travis Scott come down as a meteor and destroy Earth and then you could have closed it out with that clip because mm. then people go whoa that's really cool and ironically um, Sweet Victory I can't remember the full... I, I don't know if the original song is called that. That's jumped up high in the charts because people were like, hey, mm. people were that upset they didn't get to see it that they went and downloaded the song again. You know, and it, it, it's so disappointing. I mean, and that's the thing that really upsets me the most is people didn't want this as some kind of like meme or kind of like joke at like the expense of things. They wanted this as a heartfelt tribute to the creator because SpongeBob has way more... It resonates more with people than I think Travis Scott ever will. And that scene has more context in terms of the Super Bowl than Travis Scott's Sicko Mode is. The only reason Sicko Mode is there is because it's a popular song. Young children like it for some reason, despite the fact no one knows what Travis Scott is saying. Um, You know, and I think why people are so disappointed is because more people can relate to SpongeBob as opposed to Travis Scott. And it's annoying to have someone like that interrupt yeah. something you actually like yeah which is frustrating no one wants to be interrupted especially you know something you know yes you can go watch the scene on youtube you know mm. you can go watch the episode you know you can mm. do whatever but it's the fact that they took the liberties to go you know what we're just gonna like almost piss on like that idea and just present you with trash to some extent that's the thing yeah it, it doesn't help the sicker mode was like my least favorite song of the year <laughs> like i don't get it i do not get it I understand Electric Dreams more than Sicko Mode. Like, <laughs> what? What is the appeal of that song? It sounds like every other trap song. Yeah. What? What is it? It. Yeah. I. I don't get it. What's so special about this song? Can someone please tell me what is so special about this song? I've heard it like five times and I don't get it. There's no. There's nothing special. Please email email us at <laughs> raccoon plus friends at gmail com. I need to understand. What you people see in this song, it's confusing. It's keeping me up at night. <laughs> I don't get it. Oh, jeez. Do you want to hit us up with the uh, next story? Uh, recess. Next story. Right. This is an interesting one. Yeah. <clears throat> so we got YouTube, apparently, removing its uh, dislike button. So, so the article that you sent me, mm-hmm. um, I can't remember the title of the article, but apparently YouTube have options. So they can either remove the counts next to the dislike and like buttons. So like the little ratio is to how 
you know, you know who likes what, basically. Exactly. So I've got like five likes and then twenty five dislikes, yeah. for example. Mm-hmm. So they can remove that number. Um, they can remove the dislike button completely. They can remove either the like and dislike button, or apparently they can have a pop up um, checkbox survey kind of thing that comes up. I'm guessing at the end of the video. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> So there are those options um, for YouTube apparently removing their dislike button. So I think, firstly, I'm a fan of surveys because, backstory, I studied psychology, did a whole lot of surveys, still mm-hmm. do kind of thing. Um, you have to question what was the point of the like and dislike button. Now, the most obvious answer to that is to identify what type of videos the mass like and dislike, right? Yeah. However... Um, Apparent well nowadays it's not actually a true reflection because you've got so many trolls online. Yeah, clicking that dislike button, and it's not a true reflection of what people of like. Of course, um, I don't know. It's it's an interesting one. I don't know why they feel the need to do it. Really, I know the reason why they feel. I think I know the reason why. Is it the trolls? Is it more? No, it's yes. These dislike mobs, as they call it, yes, they're an issue. I I honestly think. That it's really just because, like, YouTube doesn't care mm. about anything on its site. It only cares about the money. And I know that sounds like, oh, it's very typical, but I think that's honestly the case. Given how things have gone, that's how they react now. I've noticed people have had their whole channels just deleted out of nowhere. They've complained on Twitter. They've had quite a big audience and they've gone, okay, we'll restore it. Mm. If they took down this channel, that's it. It's not coming back. <laughs> I don't care. Um, I don't have that much of an audience. But I think what happened was their um, YouTube Rewind 2018, Everyone Controls um, Rewind video, which is kind of like their yearly, oh, this is how great YouTube was, like marketing stunt video. It's the most, currently at the time of recording, it's the most disliked video on YouTube because people right. wanted it to be. How many dislikes was that? Or did it have? I don't know like... the exact number, but it is the most disliked video on YouTube. Was that 25 YouTube. million or something? Quite a few. Yeah, Simply because like people that. decided, we don't like this, it's not a reflection, you know. And if you keep in mind, this is the point they were making, which actually got them to actually do something about it, because now they're thinking about this again. Mm-hmm. Like, right. this is the first time YouTube has suggested this option. They've mentioned it a few times, mm. I- you know, in terms of, like, you know, a lot of these YouTube snowflake YouTubers going, oh, man, is people bullying <laughs> me? Oh, this is losing my... You know, revenue, and that's why they bring it up again, because it comes okay. back to the money, um, right. for the most part. And I'm not really a fan of this. I mean, it's obvious they're going to get rid of it regardless, okay. because it doesn't help them. It doesn't yeah. help us. It doesn't help them, mm. for the most part. I just wish they would do it, because, I mean, you know, might as well put another nail in the coffin, guys. You've already mm. got, like, 18. <laughs> And what's one more? <laughs> yeah, exactly. What's one more? And I don't like these ideas of, like, the survey, only because... Um, this is the thing... That survey, the, the well, go on. You're just inviting more like trolls, simply yeah. put. Yeah. And I've already seen an example that was floating around Twitter where um, I think they did some kind of like tweet where they asked people some questions. And I yeah. think YouTube got back to them saying, oh, why do you not feel that YouTube is blah, blah, blah? To yeah, which someone yeah. wrote a whole essay basically talking about everything that's wrong with right. YouTube. You're just going to invite that. And they're, they're basically inviting more of what they don't want to hear, which yeah. is they're bad. Yeah. They don't want to face the inevitable. To be put, and they just want to hide behind it because investors and advertisers just want to put mm. stuff on them. They want that money. Um, this is I'll- my issue with the survey, though. I don't want a survey popping up at the beginning, middle, or end of the video. Did you like that five seconds of the video? Why did you not yeah, like that? Five this is seconds the thing. Of the video? And the word "survey" it suggests it's going to be more than two questions, right? Rather yeah. than "did you like" or "did you not like." Exactly. I think it all depends on what information they want to collect and how they want it, like implement it, because. A pop-up box at the end. No one's going to do it. No, no. Or if they do, do, it's going to be a long rant of this is what I don't like. Blah blah blah. Yeah, and I mean, I also think that kind um to that, at some extent, removing the dislike like bar. I Mm. think that's, I think that is still censoring and stifling like people's criticisms and opinions because not everyone is mass going out and disliking or liking videos. Yes, people do that when they're not happy with things or don't like things. It happens. Mm. But at the same time, there are people who have, you know. 500 subscribers and all their fans like all their videos because yeah. that's what they want yeah. you know 
you know, if so, you know, if you've got one dislike, that's not going to go. Oh, what? Someone didn't like the, you know, you know, they're freaking out over nothing. This is AI. No human is going to do this. And I find this whole situation is just like I said, just another nail in the coffin mm-hmm. because they're going to do it regardless. They've mm-hmm. always wanted to because eventually you'll be able. Eventually there'll be nothing. It'll just be a, a screen mm-hmm. where you watch the video and it's like, don't you even dare dislike this. Yeah. Um, you can hardly do anything on YouTube now. <laughs> It's YouTube is so many restrictions. Simply put, and they say it's for the sake of it being like family friendly, but it's not. It's really for like the, the money's sake. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't like you know, they constantly lie about things. And uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It's it's kind of stupid. They always hide behind some kind of excuse or reasoning behind it, and it does it does frustrate me. Yeah. I kind of wish that YouTube would actually just be a bit more honest and kind of say, "Yeah, we're in a really bad position." <laughs> Because they really are like you, you, you. I don't think I don't think they actually quite realize that they're about to go down. God, they. I really don't think they do. And uh, yeah, I was kind of sh- surprised that they even brought this back up again. But mm. I think it's just that they're salty. They're yeah. salty that <laughs> their their rewind video is so disliked. Mm. And I think they're also very frustrated that the users actually abuse their own corrupted system. Right. Yeah. You know, because I guess they found a way around the system. <laughs> because I guess the, what they thought was. I think they thought, oh, if we just remove all the comments and all the the actual like ratio, people would just not whatever. But people still did. There was a, su- a suggestion in the comments um, section from the article that you that you shared, mm-hmm. and it said that if it was to work, well, the only way it could work is to allow the dislike option after a certain percentage of the video has been viewed. So it's like you can't just dislike something after five seconds of watching it. You'd have to watch fifty percent, say, and then have the option to dislike. But then that would also others. like contradict like some of the other things with YouTube because most mm. people, some people might be disliking this video because it's not what they wanted or it's bad or it's like a troll in itself. Right. So without that option, people will never, these it, like fraudulent trollish videos could stay up. Yeah. These fake videos yeah. could stay up because then, because then either you users themselves or YouTube then has to, or an AI then has to go and decide, is this video real? which mm. opens up a whole other issue now because it's like, who's going to who's gonna monitor that? Yeah. You know, what can an AI defy as a real video made by a person rather than just some Autobot, like, you know, spamming videos for the sake of money profit? Mm. That's the that's why that system wouldn't work. They should just... I mean, although it sounds bad, they should just get rid of this, like, bar. Yeah. They should just get rid of it all because I know that's what they want. They don't want anyone to have an opinion. You even mention politics on there, they'll have your ass. <laughs> Simply put. It, it's ridiculous. Like, although some people are going to believe in one side of um, politics and the other side of politics, yeah. if you're going to really be a place where, as their motto used to say, to broadcast yourself, you cannot be taking down, let's say, left ideas while keeping up right ideas and vice versa, mm. because that's not correct. That's stifling opinions, and then it makes you look like you're favoring one side of. Mm this coin and that coin youtube really needs to actually talk to people and actually say what do you want because youtube doesn't know what it wants and google themselves think they're the internet and it's not the case it's uh it's a really stupid situation and i wish they would uh do something about it because they could redeem themselves but they're not going to they're just going to let it die they know it's dead they're just going to mess around a little bit longer it's it's a shame but let's move on to some of our topics and trailers. And the first trailer we have is the maybe eagerly awaited trailer for The Fast and the Furious Presents. God. I didn't even check my notes. Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Now, I don't know. I, Fast and Furious Presents Ghostbusters. Might as well. Fast and Furious Presents Bloody <laughs> and My Little Pony. <laughs> present, presents another film. Yeah. Um, I'm just calling it Hobbs and Shaw. Um, I the only Fast and Furious film I've seen is Tokyo Drift, much like everyone. Okay, yeah, and yeah, like everyone's seen everyone has seen Tokyo though, Drift. Right? <laughs> simply put, and I have a funny history with um the Fast and Furious because I haven't seen any of the new ones, but I've always been the person to, uh, I've always been the person who tells people, yeah, they're all garbage. Mm. I don't know why you watch that rubbish. Mm. Um, especially one of my favorite incidents was when. The film where Paul Walker died in, or mm. disappeared, and I loved just seeing how many people were coming at the cinema going, it's a great way to end the series. <laughs> and I just came in like, um, they've got four more planned. 
You think just because Paul Walker's dead, they're going to stop? No, nope. nah, they already got your money and they got your hand in your pocket. Yeah. Of course, they're going to keep going. Of course, yeah. um, they even, they've even, you know, just as a quick tangent, they've even suggested bringing Paul Walker back. Oh, did they? Yes. Wow. So Paul Walker, the dead man, could be back because that's doable now. Gosh. All the scenes with Paul Walker were finished with two big black guys. <laughs> so you know, wow. but um, I'm also surprised. I'm shocked that Idris Idris Elba is even in this film. You know, as strong robot man. Because that's what he's called. Oh my gosh. When I saw that in the trailer, I was like, really? Like, seriously, he's going to have powers? Okay. <laughs> Superpowers. Well, everyone everyone is in Fast and Furious is a superhero. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I've watched some scenes and I was like... <laughs> There's I no way that can happen. I, I didn't know The Rock was in Marvel films. <laughs> so, <laughs> that one scene. Oh my God. That one scene on the plane. Oh God, my God. That, that was... <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm... No. <laughs> I can't even hold it together. <laughs> Just think about that scene. <laughs> or that bit where the rock like punches the ground. Oh, my God. <laughs> the films are a joke, and I at least give them that they don't take it too seriously. But mm. with this film, it's kind of hard to tell if they're taking it seriously or not. Because um, the first thing I want to mention is the poster, which I don't know if you've seen, but this poster. I is, think I've seen it. It's the poster where you see. Um, uh, Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Johnson, and mm. uh, was it Jason Statham? Not Jason Statham, is it? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And um, Jason Statham is on one side of the road with you know a car mm. with Big Ben in the background, and then um, uh, I'm forgetting his name. The Rock is on the other side of the same road with a motorcycle and palm trees. Okay. So. Yeah, visually and geography, okay. geography wise, that doesn't make it's sense incorrect. because there are no palm trees in England. <laughs> I like to see those palm trees. <laughs> yes, in England, you know the ones by Big Ben. Wow. You know, just across the street from Big Ben. Yeah. If you ever go to London, if they definitely look out for the palm trees. That's what I'm saying. Watch out, boy. I get that they're, you know, they're trying to visually say, oh, it's two different worlds coming together, England, America. You know, these two characters don't get along, but it doesn't make any sense. No. You could have just Whack. done like a montage of like you know Star Wars montage of the characters, which would be a little bit more fitting, mm. since this is basically a fantasy film. Yeah, fantasy, Mission Impossible. <laughs> yeah, and I mean this film was ridiculously dumb. Yeah, like there's does. some scenes where even for the series, I'm like, oh, okay, it does. Okay, you know, I know the last film you would like dive in cars out of buildings and such, but like, yeah, 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 yeah. really, it could yeah. have been a standalone film. Like, without any ties to Fast and Furious. Yeah, and it really should have been. Hmm. I mean, who who's not going to watch a film with uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Dwayne, yeah, exactly. Dwayne Johnson in it? Because everyone does, apparently. Um, he did about 50 movies last year? like. <laughs> yeah, about that, yeah. Pretty much. And I mean, the, and I think the trailer spoils too much in the film as well. It gave a lot away, didn't like, it? You can like, kind of tell that most of the film happens in that yeah. skyscraper building. Yeah, yeah. Like damn, a lot's gonna things are gonna go down in that section. I mean, you got them meeting Idris Elba there. You know, they got like the interrogation scene. They run down the building and then they throw a tank around it. And I'm just like, oh my god! Like, is the whole film just that scene? And I think even the way they did the character introductions was really weird, where mm. the character actually said a comedic line into the camera, and I was mm. like, what? Mm. What film is this? I didn't realize it was Deadpool three. Like. Like it's confusing because I don't understand the tone. Yeah. Are they? It's weird. I I don't get it. Like because this is meant to be a team up opposites attracts mystery film, not a comedy. Mm. And it's like you know Dwayne's like oh man I'm the I'm the best I'm gonna punch people and I'm like who is he talking to? <laughs> he's talking to? Is he talking to us? Talking to the cameraman? Like what is going on? I don't know. This one looks bootleg as hell. Bootleg. But it's probably gonna make a billion though. Because people can't get enough of Fast and Furious now, apparently. No, this is the thing. It's going to do well because it's got that ties to Fast and Furious. And it also that's, might not. That's the only reason. I don't know. It's it's annoying. Uh, do you want to move on to the next uh, trailer? Which is a little bit more up your uh, next streak, trailer. I guess. Kind hey. of. Right. So the next trailer is The Isle. So I'm a horror fan. Mm-hmm. So when I clicked on the link, saw the thumbnail, I was really like, oh, cool. This is what I'm talking about. Pre-ordered ticket already. For real. <laughs> <coughs> um... Yeah, thumbnail or poster, I guess, is interesting. It's kind of like a weird foresty background. Then you kind of see, like, I'm guessing it's a ghost of this woman. It's like a calf hiding behind a tree or something like I that. I didn't actually see that. Um, so, yeah, I can't yeah. remember it. So, it was like, boom, this is what I'm talking about. Um, 
I'm really like, oh, nice. And then, so I press play on the trailer, and I'm seeing um, this actor. Apologies if I pronounce mispronounce his name. So Fiseo Akinade. Um, he was in E4's Cucumber, um, oh, okay. In the Dark, and The Girl with All the Gifts, which I've yet to see. Okay. Um, so that was that Netflix zombie movie. But it wasn't a Netflix it. film, but yeah. Oh, it, it wasn't was an yeah. original. Oh, no. okay. Well, it's a British film, I believe, actually. I think it is British, yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, already they're doing all the right things. I'm like, yes, I'm hooked. You got me. Um, press play. These three, I guess, well, people that were on a ship um, approach this island. Island's obviously haunted. Um, so some bad juju is going some, on there. Exactly, some bad juju. <laughs> Um, da, da, da. so yes, yeah, I'm mystical force uh, who seems to have control over the inhabitants on the island. Yeah, I, mm, I'm not. I mean, it's good that I don't know what's going on mm. on this island. I'm, I'm thinking a little bit more witch mm. possession cult. This is the thing. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, and I kind of like the idea of a film being a little bit more in line with The Witch, like 2015's yes. The Witch or The Witch. That was great. Um, which is a fantastic really film. Good. I kind of hope this film is good. I yeah. don't think it'll be as good as The The Witch. I don't think so. Um, but it no. looked like it had promise. There were some freaky concepts, like the whispering in the islands, yeah. reminding me a little yeah. bit of Lost, a yeah, bit, the TV exactly. series Lost, and um, that one lady, when she was doing weird things, was lying on the beach and she looked really yeah. white. And I'm like, what's going on here, girl? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they look like it could have some stuff. It doesn't look like a, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look like Bird Box where it's like, oh no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the best film of 2018, of course, <laughs> um, where's its Oscar nomination. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I kind of like, the, I kind of like it. Hopefully there will be a cinema release. Mm. I doubt it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I didn't actually check the release of that though. I think it's Which a very, one? independent smaller right. film so mm. I almost doubt it's going to get a cinema release but it looked pretty interesting I yeah, like the idea and I kind of I always try and get something that maybe no one has heard of because obviously the two trailers besides this that we're going to talk about most people have seen but I always mm. want to throw in like one sneaky one and go oh I didn't know yeah. about that yeah. and this is that so yeah I'm I'm glad you like it I'm looking forward to it whatever yeah. happens but it's not like a, a must watch for the yeah. most part uh, anything else to add to that uh, film? Um, no I mean Again, I didn't, I didn't know of it until you sent it to me. Fair um, so enough. it was a good surprise. I'm doing my job. That's the thing. Yeah, that's good. Spread and the word. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> the whole point of this podcast as well, to some extent. <laughs> and the last trailer we're going to talk about is what we do in the shadows, season one, the trailer, which originally couldn't watch it because they blocked it in England, Why? but now we finally have a proper trailer for I guess it's February March release date, and. I guess the first thing I'm going to say is I'm really happy that the original guys have come back to this series. Uh, uh, Jermaine Clement and Taki Watiti Wakatiki. He's I've, I'm not 100% sure how to say his name. It's like Taika Waititi. Okay. He basically he directed the original What We Do in the Shadows back from 2014 as well as Thor Ragnarok and what was the other thing? Um, the Hunt for the Water Beast as well which is a pretty funny weird comedy I've heard of so he hasn't done too much but obviously what we do in the shadows is really the thing that put him on the map and obviously most people know uh, Jermaine Clement from Flat Concords and various other like uh, cameos of things I, th- I believe mm. he was in um, The Battle of the Opposites of Sex the, oh, okay. yeah and yeah. Um, he was in Moana as well um, doing some musical talents because he does have a musical background um, and you know kind of going back to that like it's nice they're working on this TV series, but it's basically remaking the original film and not to mention like recycling jokes and visuals, the mockumentary oh. style, possibly the characters. The, the problem is, is unfortunately nothing I haven't really already seen. Okay. I would have rather had any of the spin offs they have planned, like uh, Werewolves, or they're kind of doing another uh, TV series spin off where it's. um. It focuses on characters that appear in the series, kind of having their own series. Mm. But that's, that's not shame, to though. say I'm not interested in the series or not yeah. liking what I'm seeing. I mean, I think I'm mainly going to watch for the newer characters, um, which is like the the lady vampire, whoever the hell she is, and that energy vampire, which oh, I think gosh, is right. a 
fantastic and promising concept. Listen, I'm loving that concept. I'm yes. sorry, I really am. Um, it's hilarious. I was laughing at the trailer. Yeah. Um, so their power is to what? Bore people with long conversation. Yeah, basically steal their energy. Exactly. I mean, the actor that they've got, amazing. Yes. Because he would <laughs> pour me to hell. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was going to say, I haven't watched the movie, so is that in the movie as well? Or um, is that concept? I... Because obviously, feel I because obviously I'm gonna end this by saying if you haven't watched the film, watch the film. It is okay. fantastic, but um, he's not in the original film. Okay. Um, so he's completely new. The Love the lady that. vampire, whatever character she may be playing, might not be in the film, but kind of some of the general ideas, like the clothing they wear, the general characters, some of the ideas is kind of in the film. Like the mockumentary style is very much there. Um, which obviously yeah, just yeah. just the idea of a documentary crew talking to New Zealand vampires is brilliant. Yeah, and that's kind of what the film is for the most part. And I mean, not to say there aren't great. There's some great visual gags, like the vampire in the shop supermarket. That alone is a brilliant concept. Mm. And just the scenes I've seen, I'm like, that's strong. Mm-hmm. Like that's really good. Like him with this massive long flowing cape, just walking down the aisles, mm. and him just you know, doing whatever. And I do like that they're doing a little bit more with the relationship with like the um the, the higher vampire and the familiar. I think that's that's great. You mm-hmm. know, but I think yeah, some yeah. some jokes are kind of failing me because I've already heard them before and they're not as strong as the jokes I've already heard before in this mm-hmm. context. But I mean and the only other thing I guess I would say was like I, I'm a bit confused as to where this T V series takes place. Like is it okay. another world from the film or is it the same world? Because um not to spoil anything, apparently there's gonna be returning characters. Oh, which is kind of confusing for me because this is an American based series as opposed to New Zealand. So I'm like, what's right. <laughs> going on here? But uh, I'm sure we'll get cameos. If they if there's gonna be a um if they are all new different new characters then yeah mm-hmm. I I would love to see the original cast return because I mean the original film was fantastic if if you haven't watched it we got to watch that tonight because it's too strong <laughs> um, everyone should go watch it before this TV series because it's probably one of my favourite comedy films of all time of recent years because it's just it's so well I mean it's one of those films where you'll be surprised where some of the quotes come from I mean one of my favourite lines from the film is well actually I'm not going to say it because I'm probably going to butcher it and I don't want to spoil too much. But yes, please go watch the original film. But thumbs up for this hmm. TV series. I don't like adaptations of films, but there's actual talent here. Unlike unlike things like Westworld, you know, where there's like, you can't go anywhere with Westworld. They should have stopped from episode two. But here you have a lot more potential. Like, for example, they came with a whole new character and a whole new concept. Like the energy vampire, which is great. Hmm. But yeah, anything else you want to add um, regarding what we do in the shadows? Um, what I want to say is that I want to watch a movie before starting this. Yes, um, everyone should. Yeah, because it does look really fun. The, the movie came out two thousand fourteen. Two thousand fourteen. It's not old. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and they they like I said they will they've been working on a few sequels and spin offs. Right. Um, which I don't know are still happening, but mm. randomly it's like a TV series now, which it looks fun though. It looks. It looks like enjoyable. it could be pretty strong it yeah. looks it I, my only fear is it looks it's going to be one of i hope it's not going to be one of those shows where people only know it for that one scene and that's the only good scene in it <laughs> there's a few shows where it's like it's like that mm. you know you know link back to westworld right because <laughs> we all know how um how well westworld turned out mm-hmm. it's so good so good like you know make make an eight series make an eight season show on a hour long concept come on guys season three get hype (laughs) get hype guys get hype for series five where we have to go back to the west world Uh, (laughs) and now that brings us to our discussion which is mainly coming from you recess now obviously as soon as this is your 2019 debut and obviously you were not on the best and the worst 2018 list we got to know some of your Mm. best from 2000 and 18 for the most part so obviously to keep it very um condensed we're just going to have some of your best and some of your worst no more than 10 of each hit us up with some stuff to watch and enjoy slash avoid and burn i guess you could say (laughs) right sweet okay so starting off with the games um so nintendo switch hollow knight 
absolutely fantastic game. It had me hooked like every single night. Um, I know it came out on other platforms, but I got it for my Switch. Um, main storyline, you basically play as an insect knight. Mm-hmm. You go around fighting enemy bugs, collecting souls, um, which you can use to power up your weapons and abilities. Um, but the storyline is to kind of like uncover the secrets of the town called Hallow Nest. So you're just going around this big old area fighting loads of bug people. But it's really cool. Really enjoyable. Um, really good graphics, actually. Yeah, for its art style, which yeah, is a little bit like darky, it. cartoony. Exactly. Which is nice. Exactly. That's kind of why I have it. You know, I'm hoping it gets ported to something I have eventually. Mm. But it's not going to happen. Definitely recommend. Mm. Um, but I also like the subtle changes as well. I don't want to give anything away, but if something will change, you won't notice it until like a day later, and you're like, "Ooh, that's new." Interesting. Um, yeah, it's it's very good. Um, I don't know how many, I was on that for how many hours, but what the game? Yeah, very okay. very enjoyable. Um, funnily enough, I played it more handheld than on my TV. Um, okay, it feels more like an arcade handheld. Yeah, game anyway. that's the thing. Yeah. Um, but I, know, I think it came out for the computer as well. Yeah, PC, but... yeah, I believe it is on PC. But um, that's up there. Mm-hmm. So if you want to play it, well, please buy it. Um, support, <laughs> support them indie games. Rep it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Netflix. So Wait, I, is just a section for Netflix? This is, is there? A, this is a section for Netflix. Okay. I watched you, and I don't know if I'm ashamed to say I watched you. Watched or... you. So you is okay a romantic story between a writer and a bookstore manager that suddenly turns creepy oh. and violent and is it a TV like, series? Oh, it's a TV series, oh, not okay. a movie. Sorry, Netflix okay. TV series. Okay. Um, it came out on TV and then I think Netflix bought it or something like that. Who knows? Stole it. Yeah. Stole it. <laughs> um, so yeah, romantic story between writer and bookstore manager. <sighs> Possessive, psychotic, dangerous. Um, there's nothing he won't do for love. Just, just to declare, is this best or worst? This, no, this is best. This okay. is best. <laughs> okay. Because you got my best list. Because I'm not sure when you come and go. Oh my god, I can't believe I watched this. Fantastic. You know, the thing is, right? It's difficult to explain. I don't know why I enjoyed it so much. I think that's the thing I'm tripping over because I. I don't okay. know what it was about it. I guess you but call that a guilty pleasure to some extent. That's the thing, and it was it was addictive. Okay. Um, well, most well the whole structure of Netflix is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Netflix gets you, um, but it was addictive. Okay. Second Netflix is a movie. We're still on best in general. Yeah, still just, on best. Just to let people still know. Still on yeah. best. Uh, Bird Box. Bird Box. I did. I enjoyed it more than I thought I'd enjoy it. Okay. Um, it's like everyone hates it. <laughs> I think you know what I think it had a good. It was different. To Ish. some extent. To some extent, it was different because people are comparing it to like a quiet place, right? And a yeah. quiet place is trash. So I'm like, what? What are this you is people the thing. I enjoyed about? it more than a quiet place, hundred percent. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I love the story. I like the progression as well and the character development mm-hmm. um, within it. So. That's why it's on my best list. I like that one scene of that guy getting, yeah, that lady getting hit by the truck. <laughs> I've seen that scene oh so many gosh. times. So, I mean, <laughs> that 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 scene is so famous that people now refer to that as bird boxed. Oh, <laughs> every time someone gets hit by a truck, it's like she got bird boxed. <laughs> Interesting. Bird box is gonna come back, and not necessarily on my best of 2018 list. Interesting. So, um, next we've got a movie. So Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Oh yeah. Um, so obviously it follows the story of Miles Morales and the Spider-Men from different universes or multiverses. Uh, Spider Girls as well. Spider Excuse Girls. Me. Spider Things. Spider Animals. Spider Bots. Anyway, yeah. Um, loved the animation in this. I think it was it was fresh. It was. It, it obviously not different, but it yeah, was. It was it, a nice take. It's it's. Interesting, mm. and obviously, I think maybe some people go, "Hey, Raccoon, if you're such an animation buff, why have you not seen this film?" And there's two reasons. Yeah. Number one, I don't like Spider Man, and number no. two, well, I don't like I don't like how much Spider Man is like exposed okay. now because it's gone to the point where it's just all the same now. And, That's the uh, thing. There and were what three, four, five, six, seven movies. There's a lot of films. 
And everything, in my opinion, after Spider-Man 3 has kind of been very underwhelming. Mm. I've not liked anything after Spider-Man 3. Yeah. And, uh, and the second reason is I am very confused by the reception towards the animation because okay. I'm like, why is the animation so slow? Right. Like, visually it looks nice. The way it moves, I don't think it looked great. It did. That's the thing. That's the one thing that took some getting used to. Like, my eyes had to adjust to its movement. It was weird, honestly. You notice yeah. it for about 10 minutes into the movie. 15 minutes, you, you're you kind of over it. But, yeah. Yeah, I think that some people have coined it as a new form of animation. It's not. Mm. But mm. Um, maybe someday, I don't want to pay for it, but like maybe yeah. someday I'll watch it. Yeah, watch it. We'll see. It's worth a watch. Mm-hmm. It is enjoyable. Um, last on my best of 2018 list... Mm-hmm is Hereditary. Hereditary. Still need to watch this one. Tony Collette, Witchcraft, shocking family drama. I've heard, need I say more? I've heard some things about this film, <laughs> and I love... I The things I've heard about this film are the yeah. reasons why some people don't like the film, oh which is why gosh. I like the film. No, what have you heard? I've... I've um, without spoiling anything for people, yeah. um, I've heard that it's... Let's just put it this way. I've heard it's not a happy ending. Okay. And a lot of people don't right. like that. Right. Because Americans love happy endings. Mm. Everything's this, resolved. It's all and normal. from what I've heard, this film is not no, happy yeah. or nice. There was some in shocking scenes. In, no, I've oof. heard about one scene and I'm like, geez. Yeah. Um, and I cannot wait to actually see it. There's I'm, one scene in particular. It's probably that one you're thinking. Maybe, like, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm looking forward to the director's next film. Uh, he's doing something What's maybe, that? I don't know what it's called, but oh. it's... Uh, I'll look, I'll I, I know the guy who was in... Oh, I forget the guy's name, but uh, it's the actor who was in... Um, what was it called? Um, Bandersnatch, and he was in oh, Meet right. the Millers and Detroit. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. That guy, he's in that film. Right. He's in that director's next film, and I think he's kind of said it's like about a bunch of teenagers or young adults who go exploring the country in mm. hereditary happens okay. <laughs> well as he kind of puts as he kind of puts it well you know what happens in hereditary oh wow all right so i'm looking forward to whatever yeah, the hell he's making yeah um but yeah hereditary i still need to watch that film yes please um do. Oof, just please thinking do. about it Oof. although i do have to say so i watched it in the cinema okay um which was great because you got the different environment you got the people screaming oh ah uh, People it's actually a, screaming. A, yeah. <laughs> like, wow, that's rare. That one scene that I think we're both thinking okay, of. Okay, wow. Yeah. Um, so I think in that like community, it was yeah, great. Yeah, kind of enha- enhanced it. Yeah, definitely. I did try to watch it again over Christmas, and I was like, okay, struggling to get through it. So I don't know what that says. Hmm. Um, but it's still an enjoyable movie. Okay, good to hear. Um, that's the end of my best of 2018. Okay. Moving on to my worst of 2018. Yes. We're back to Bird Box. Okay. Bird Box themed parties. Now, I honestly don't know if this was a joke or not, but apparently America had Bird Box themed parties. I'm like, what? They also had like an unintentionally created meme where people were just blindfolding themselves and doing things. It's, it's crazy. And then children were getting hurt. And I'm like, yeah, you're supposed to be the parents. Yeah. Parent, like <laughs> yeah, it's like that. Um, that I guess because it's always American teenagers. Not to say English teenagers don't do this dumb stuff yeah. that they see on the internet, but it's look. I remember when there was the recent trend where children were essentially covering themselves in baby oil and lighting themselves on fire. Oh yeah, and I was like, what's what's it's what's crazy, the right? challenge? Not to not to burn. Die. <laughs> and I just really quick talking about when yeah. you're going about like being the parents. There's one there's yeah. one clip of this one kid who mm. literally basically sets himself on fire. The mother who was featured in that video holding the camera got sent to prison wow. for bad parenting. Congratulations. Congratulations, you played yourself. <laughs> but Oof. my gosh. Yeah, I don't know what was going on. Just like it is a weird enigma where people were just so hooked on this film that a lot of people didn't even like for the most right. part and it's like oh man I'm, blind- I'm gonna drive while blindfolded yeah that's the thing what it was a craze that just got out, out of hand big it's time like... Netflix had to even issue an, a, like, a, a warning saying mm. please do not do this because mm. obviously they'd be liable absolutely ridiculous it's like why 
What's wrong with you? Just what? Exactly. What's wrong with you? Just watch the film and shut up. <laughs> enjoy it. Done. <laughs> enjoy Over. it or don't this enjoy it. Life. Continue your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awful. So that was in my worst list. Oh, fair enough. Um, Predator remake. Oh yes. Now, admittedly, I haven't watched it. I've <laughs> I've steered clear. But I'm not like, a lot of people have one. recess. I'm like another one. Seriously. Wait, which film are you talking about? The newest the, one. Yeah, the newest one. The you new didn't Predator. watch that. No. Okay. No. Fair enough. Did like you I, Did you watch it? No. But there was no need to because like, I knew it was going to be garbage. That's the thing. What's the point? What are they going to introduce that's new? That's different. Odd Predator. Yeah. It's crazy. There's predators here. Look look how like zany our poster is with the orange background and colour. <laughs> right? Get get ready. I um, mean, talking about this, I do feel kinda of guilty because the amount of aliens that they've remade and put out, I will go and see them because I'm an, a huge alien fan. However, Predator ain't on the same level, so No, because the the you only need to watch the first Predator film. Mm. That film's like perfect yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Um for what it is. I haven't watched Predator 2. Yeah. For some reason, Predator 2 doesn't exist to me. Right. <laughs> and I don't ask me why, mm. but for some reason, I don't know, it's probably the way I'm wired, yeah. that film doesn't exist okay. in my memory or my brain. I've never seen mm-hmm. it, mm-hmm. mind you. Yeah. I know it exists, but I'm always surprised and shocked when someone goes, there was a Predator 2. Yeah. And I'm always like, no, there wasn't. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. I've never seen that film. But yeah. I'm always like, there was never a Predator 2. Mm. It's, it's weird but this new film obviously people were like yeah it's this, by the same guy who was in the first film and he's a good director mm. and I remember just saying to people doesn't mean the film's gonna be good he still mm-hmm. fucked it up it's like of course I mean one of the biggest problems with the film is it just it just makes fun of things that don't make any sense things you are very touchy to make fun of mm. and insulting and it's just a bad film I'm so glad that this has basically sunk 20th Century Fox's plan for more Predator films more Alien films I mean 20th Century Fox doesn't exist anymore but still I'm shocked it's, ugh. It's, anyway continue, continue with your Awful. list so last on my list is oh my god Will Smith doing the shifty challenge the what? <laughs> shifty challenge what is the shifty challenge? so it, it became famous um, with this guy I don't know I'm guessing he's um, some social media guy, famous guy, but he danced to one of Drake's songs and then it kind of went viral. And then Will Smith decided to go to, I believe, Budapest. And like then you do. do. Well, like you do. And then do this dance on top of a building. I don't know what the building was. <laughs> but I'm like, you yeah, haven't got anything better to do. Yeah, it's supposed to be What's in the film I, I watched the whole video and like, that was a waste of my time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like Will Smith. I like some of his movies. This is the first time Nothing I'm hearing of this him. moment in history. Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of celebrities jumped on it. Um, Sierra did it. She was good. Um, that's because she can dance. That's, that's, why. that's the thing. Cause she, <laughs> she you know, <laughs> the girls got rhythm to quote Massive Attack. Um, but. Yeah, I just thought it was a waste of time. Waste of my time, personally. So, Will Smith, if you're hearing this, I want an apology. (laughs) A public apology. (laughs) Email us, Will Smith, at raccoonplusfriends.gmail.com and formally apologise to Recess for whatever the Swifty dance was. It doesn't even... Isn't that that from Rick and Morty? Isn't that the song that Rick sings, Get Swifty? Oh, I forgot about that. That is the song, isn't it? Get Swifty. I forgot about that. Interesting. Um, oh, well, no, that wraps up my worst list of twenty. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, so some nice stuff to watch and avoid. Yeah. Um, for the most part, but yeah, good, good stuff. I mean, obviously, a nice condensed version of what mm. the three hours we did, and talking about <laughs> our best of. But then again, we go in like hardcore with so much stuff. Luckily, this year has been pretty much slow for the most part, so I'm pretty happy about mm. that. Um, I guess before we wrap up this podcast, we can do the. Uh, video of the episode which is going to be by one let's see if we can try and do his name <laughs> Tori Moa Tori Moa Toro E Moa with um, Ordinary Pleasure which yeah. I'm a big fan of Tori slash Chad and um, this is coming from his latest album 
I can't remember what it's called actually right now because I haven't heard it yet. But um, I thought the music video was pretty damn well done as this weird hippie hipster studio yeah. Yeah. experimental, you know, look how relaxed and cool and thingy we are. I think it's very mm. intentional. He's not actually like that. He is a bit of a hipster in terms of some of his like visuals and production. But this is kind of him making fun of this kind of um, way of presenting yourself as like this, you know humble musician kind of like attitude you know there's even some very clear um examples of that for example in the music video you can see a little light which has the logo of one of his other projects uh the sins if you know what that logo looks like you can see it in the music video you'll see the cameraman who's filming the music (laughs) video as well if you look very carefully as well you can also see the crew who's actually watching the uh, music video feed in the background as well Mm -hmm. of the music video just before they um, go outside you can see a bunch of guys with like equipment in the back in that mm. tiny little room very intentionally place stuff to kind of go yeah this yeah. is all fake yeah you know and yeah. that's the whole point even even the way the um music video ends is very pretentious and art housey and but mm. at the same time has the technical filming uh it, it's technically well done because as the um not to spoil too much but as the uh <laughs> visuals kind of like close off if you notice, the cameraman pulls back to maintain the uh, all the characters in the frame as it gets smaller. Uh-huh. So that was a very, um, once again, another very intentional thing because you could have just had it closed and see, no, yeah. but the cameraman intentionally pulled back to keep that scene lasting as long. Nice. But obviously, you do that if you want to be artsy. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to make a point about how artistic you are, mm-hmm. you do that. And that's what's brilliant about this music video. And the song's pretty cool as well. It was nice. It was, it was funky. It's like, a really it funky uh, yeah. track. And I do like some of the things that uh, Tori does say in the music video mm. as well. He's kind of kind of been going at that with his newest album, which is great. Mm. Um, particularly look up the front cover of the music album for... Yeah, particularly look up the album cover that this song lands on because it's pretty funny. Just him sitting at a computer desk with lights and it's just a skeleton sitting there. Is it? <laughs> yeah, I believe we have that version. I just noticed there's a version of him from the from the music video where he's in this studio background on his computer, like sitting on an exercise ball on his computer, and our version of it of the album is a skeleton. Oh wow! Which cool. is makes a great point about some of the ideas he's trying to go about this yeah, independent yeah, yeah. funky kind of you know whatever kind of thing. And that's why I kind of like him. He always changes his style. Okay. His albums aren't really the same. Simply put, uh... definitely look him up. He's worth. Um, yeah, he's worth he's worth <laughs> he's he's worth looking up basically. I was gonna say because I haven't listened to any of his um, like material before. I was gonna say, does he stick to that genre or no? This it's... is this is once again something very new. Oh, it's cool. it's similar but it's new. The sound is very different. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely big recommendations there. Anything else you want to add to this podcast before we wrap it up? Recess. Um... No, well, there was this one thing. I just wanted to ask you if there were any like worst of 2019s already. For what you. for me? Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is it? Is it any? Um. No, worse. There isn't anything that I think is that terrible. I'm very. I guess I would say I'm very disappointed in Kingdom Hearts three. Okay. Although I wouldn't really say that that's the worst thing, or is it going yeah. to be on my top ten? No, yeah. because there's still a lot of great stuff in that. Just very disappointing. Okay. Um, I don't really have a lot of worst. I've kind of been avoiding mm-hmm. music for the most part. I haven't listened to anything bad. Mm-hmm. Not too much bad has been dropped. Um, yeah. yeah. Grimes' new album. Okay. I think that's going to be awful. <laughs> and I guess I'll leave it at that. I think that album is going to be absolute <laughs> garbage. God. So maybe. We'll maybe. see what happens. Maybe that. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> to we'll be see. continued. To be continued <laughs> on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> and I think we should end the podcast <laughs> right there. Um, I was the Angry Raccoon. I was Recess. And we will see you on the next podcast. Bye.